Shane here from Roseman Analytical. Today I'm here to show you how to change the maintainable module in the 370XA gas chromatograph. What we have is a, an analytical module that has the columns, the detectors, uh, and the analytical valves all inside this analytical module that can be quickly removed and then replaced with either a new one or a overhaul module and put back in line quite fast. So what I'm going to do is go through the process of removing the module and then putting the module back on. So what we have here is we have the 370XA. It's, uh, it's running at the moment. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off power. So if we can take off power, then we need to remove the gases. So we're going to isolate the gases here on the sample conditioning panel. and the carrier gas supply and now I'm going to start uh, removing the module. The beauty of this is only two tools that you require. One is a two millimeter hex uh, wrench so that you can undo the lock screw on the side of the dome and also we'll use a four millimeter wrench when we actually take off the module. So now I've loosened the lock screw, I'm going to unscrew the dome. And here we have the analytical module. Sometimes when you take it off, the insulated cap will stay on, side, on the analytical module or sometimes it'll come off with the lid. It doesn't really matter. Actually what we need to do is we do need to take that insulated cap off so that we can get to the four screws that hold down the module. So here is the analytical module. There's no need for us to get inside the oven. There's no need for us to get inside the actual uh, analytical components. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this analytical module off, uh, disconnect the three connectors, and then we'll put on the new module. So here we go. We take off the... Now this is a uh, four millimeter hex wrench. I'll just loosen them first. Now as you loosen it, you might hear some pressure escape. That's the uh, carrier gas and whatever sample may be left in the analytical components just venting. If you do loosen this and you hear a constant flow of gas, then it means that uh, you've probably left the carrier gas or sample gas on. You want to quickly turn that off before uh, anyone notices that you made a mistake. And then we take off these four screws. side and now we're going to lift the module off so we gently just rock it and lift the module off now the connectors are still going to be connected so first of all we disconnect the heater then we disconnect the solenoids and now we disconnect from the IMB the detector signal and now the oven is off now it's really important <clears throat> when you take the oven off there's a, a set of O-rings on here, on what we call the feed-through, and sometimes when you take the module off, these O-rings actually stick to the bottom of the module. You want to make sure you take them all off, and also you want to replace the O-rings once you, when you put on a new module, because you don't know how long these O-rings have been there, and so you just want to make sure that you start off fresh. And so uh, when you get a new module, inside the kit will be a bag of about 10 of these o-rings that you'll put on here so that you have nice fresh o-rings. So I'm going to put this to the side. Okay so now what we want to do is we want to remove these o-rings because remember we're going to put new fresh o-rings in there. A neat little trick is that two millimeter uh, hex wrench that I used before. If you actually put that in the middle of the o-ring it's really easy to kind of lever it out. You want to be really careful that you don't use a screwdriver or anything sharp which might scratch the ceiling surface. That's why this uh, hex wrench works really well because you actually don't touch the metal surface, you just go on the inside of the o-ring 
and pull it out. Okay, so now we've taken all the O-rings off, um, we're ready to put on the new module. You want to make sure, we have uh, two options on the 370. We have a one stream and cowl, or we have a multi-stream and cowl. And you want to make sure that if you're replacing, especially a multi-stream uh, module, that you replace it with a multi-stream uh, new module. So, to tell if you've got a one stream and cowl or a multi-stream and cowl, you look at these stream selection solenoids here. Here we have a one stream and cowl, so it only has two stream selection solenoids. A multi-stream module would have uh, three stream solenoids and one calibration solenoid with uh, four solenoids in total. So now we're going to put this uh, new module onto the GC. The first thing to do is to put the new O-rings into the feed-through. We always want to use new O-rings because we don't know how long the old O-rings have been in there. And so just to make sure that we always uh, have a, a running GC once we're finished, it's a good idea to always use the new O-rings. So, so there's, uh, we've now got um, O-rings in each of the feed-through there. Just before I put the new module on, I just want to show you this feed-through. You can see here that it's on kind of like a spring. So what happens when we put the module on, we, as we screw the module down, it pushes down onto this very strong spring and that gives us our tight seal uh, on the O-rings. So now I'm going to take my new module. On the mo Okay, with the line at the front, we're just going to rest the module here on the back, plug in the detector signals into the uh, intelligent module board, the IMB, then we'll plug in the solenoid cables, just make sure they're clicked in tight, make sure they're clicked in tight, for the heater we'll just move that to the side for the moment, and now we're going to put the module on, Go. You can see there now that it, it'll move around because there's a little bit of play with that feed through, but you can tell that it's in uh, in the little guide pins are uh, in the holes, and so it's sitting flat. Now, just before we tighten it up, we're going to connect the heater and tuck that back in here. And now we'll put our four screws in. Do the one at the back first. Don't tighten it all the way. You'll feel that as you do this, you can feel the spring on the feed through pushing down, making that O-ring seal. Now we're tight, and now we put the dome on. Just make sure none of the cables are going to get cut by the by the dome. Insulation cap there. Now we put the dome on, and we screw it down. Okay. Do up our. Locking screw on the side. And now we're ready to turn the GC back on. But before we put power on, we're going to turn our carrier gas back on. And our calibration and stream gases. And now we turn power back on. And the beauty of the 370 is that we have this new module wizard. Uh, we have an intelligent module board in there which stores the calibration information and the timed events for that particular module. And what happens is that when the GC boots up, it recognizes that it's got a new module. And so it downloads all the calibration information and then it will go through what we call a new module startup where it will uh, exercise the valve so it will um, 
turn the valves on and off, on and off, so that it gets a, a nice uh, purge of helium through the analytical flow path. It will heat the GC up, the, uh, the analytical oven up to temperature. Then it will, once it's up to temperature and stable, it will run calibration gas. It analyzes the calibration gas to see if the measurement is good. If it doesn't recognize all of the peaks in the calibration gas, it'll actually do what we call an auto valve timing. So it will adjust its own valve timing to suit um, for the different conditions. But if it does pass and it does read the calibration gas correctly, then it will calibrate itself. And then once it calibrates itself and it passes the calibration, then it will go online and start measuring stream gas straight away, all without you even touching a button. So the whole idea is that we've now changed the module. We can go away. It'll take about two hours, maybe three hours, for the GC to get up to temperature, and it'll go through that routine of running the calibration gas, maybe doing some valve timing, then it'll calibrate itself, and then go online. So you can come back in about three hours, and if you see that it's running sample gas, it's running in auto analysis mode, you can walk away and know that it's running accurately. Okay, thank you for your time, and um, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative, and I'll see you.